bank world. DeFi is referred to as financial applications built on blockchain technologies, typically using smart contracts. And what better way to learn all about DeFi than from our own distinguished guest speaker today, Mr. Akash Gaurav. Mr. Akash Gaurav is a technology entrepreneur featured among global top 100 blockchain influencers and leaders 2019 by Lattice 80. It is indeed an honor to be able to enhance our knowledge in this field from a pioneer such as himself. Mr. Akash Gaurav, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for agreeing to impart your experience with all of us present here. I'm certain that it will be an extremely fruitful session for everybody. Without further delay, now I might, I will uh, forward this up and uh, ask you to just continue with the event, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Tanvi, so much. Um, so, hey, hi, everyone. And... Uh, First of all, I really appreciate and I really want to thank all of you that you guys waited uh, because of the mix up. Uh, we are starting this session really late and I understand it's a Sunday evening. All of you would have plans, but but I, I really see this great motivation that you had uh, to learn that, uh, you, that even after 45 minutes, you guys are still there. So first of all, thank you so much for that. Now let's start with today's session. So we are going to talk about decentralized finance or how we like to call it or how we uh, call it in then our umbrella session is as of DeFi. So what is really DeFi, right? Now, before going into DeFi, uh, let's first introduce, I, I would like to introduce myself as well. So, uh, Sanvi has given uh, a very brief overview on uh, how I am recognized. However, uh, uh, so I, I graduated from IIT Bombay in 2017, and uh, I have always been inclined towards entrepreneurship. I started my first company, first blockchain company, in my third year of undergraduate study, uh, Oxsess Group. Uh, this we started in uh, 2015. Uh, the company was one of the very first companies in the blockchain space. In fact, we were the uh, we were among the top ten companies that have registered for enhancing and innovating India in the blockchain space. Uh, so I continued taking up that company ahead even after my graduation, uh, and finally we the, that company got acquired by a Swiss based company in 2019. After that, I started my second company, which is in NFT space. Uh, I'm sure you might have so far heard about NFT. Uh, NFTs are the second coolest and the biggest uh, uh, technology that came after cryptocurrencies in blockchain space. So cryptocurrencies were the pioneers which actually invented blockchain technology. The umbrella technology which is, uh, which is contributing into all this, what we are building today, including DeFi. So the cryptocurrencies were the first use case, then the second use case came was of NFT, or we like to call it as a non-fungible token. Currently, even in India, uh, for the top superstars, for top cricketers, for top sportsmen and other influencers, there are NFTs being created, people are collecting these NFTs, trading these NFTs, and a new class of digital assets has been recognized. Now, over the years, when the cryptocurrency or crypto asset grew, and then, uh, a, a, and then on top of it, after cryptocurrencies, which used to work as a token or which used to work as a currency for the sake of transaction, has now been changed into an, another asset class which people are owning in the form of NFT. So these created their own form of NFT. Now the third next big thing, which cryptocurrency and blockchain power together reinvented is DeFi, the decentralized finance. So decentralized finance is in use, it's, it's a very nascent uh, thing. It's a very nascent element. In fact, it's being now used, uh, it's being now used for by even uh, a few people. So currently the DeFi space is very small, very, very small. Uh, there are only a handful of people who are currently in this sector who can understand this, who understand this sector. And 
it is mainly because of the entire nascentness of the technology such as if i give you an example uh, artificial intelligence something new something very cutting edge the foundation of artificial intelligence has happened in way back in 1970s and 1980s and so far from 1970s it's been 50 years and now we see artificial intelligence at a place where google maps youtube i mean probably these uh, these are some of the applications i would say that i am really thankful for uh, the ai to happen right otherwise i wouldn't get so much good recommendations on my youtube i wouldn't get uh, so much better uh, traffic data from the google map this changed the world this changed how we live in how how we are disrupting and uh, that's where uh that that's where now the defi or web defi stands in and let's look at the age of defi so defi is uh, is has grown out of something called blockchain when was blockchain invented blockchain has been ju- invented just 12 just 14 years back in 2008 with bitcoin so you can compare the entire uh, youngness of this particular technology so this has been an introduction to set up you the context of how nascent the defi is how early it is but also to recognize the potential that this is something disrupting now and this is not something that's going to be a very easy and smooth uphill why so let's look at the finance in the current form as we know it so the very early form of finance when human civilization uh, become able enough we started the first form of finance system that was started was of a barter system i'm i'm sure all of you would already know that that the, the first form of finance was people used to give their livestock to the uh, farmers who give them the wheat and rice in return uh, someone would trade their uh, say labor uh for return of uh, again maybe food maybe clothes so this were the barter system of sir barter to barter of services barter of goods used to happen then came mesopotamia i'm sure again most of you would have heard of mesopotamia it's a very ancient civilization and very much well known as well probably you guys wouldn't be knowing five other civilizations but most of you would have heard about mesopotamia what was that so much unique about mesopotamia so mesopotamia was the first civilization which introduced the concept of money as we know it so mesopotamia introduced coins that now people don't have to da- to trade in barter they have a issued token or a issued coin which is recognized in their civilization the value can be measured in that particular coin and then after and and then it can be used as a exchange of value that's what mesopotamia came mesopotamia given up now definitely mesopotamia was like what probably 10000 uh, around 10000 years back when this uh, when when uh, this concept was introduced then over the years as the civilization came and go ultimately we found that by 2000 bc uh, before the birth of christ to 2000 years before uh, bc the concept of banks money government started to come in and now it is not just that your coins are the gold coins which is recognized at a, at at every level now the government now your coins used to come mint by the bank which is recognized in particular nation particular city a particular civilization of their own and since then and since then this form of finance where there are government where there are central intermediaries where there are banks uh, in any and 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 definitely uh, in last in just last probably 200 to 300 years we have exploded up the financial market the innovation in finance in general has been mind boggling now the finance is not just about banks it's not just about um, uh, it's it's not just about facilitating borrowing and lending loans for the consumers 
it's about it's the the larger part of it comes as a stock market even larger part of it comes as a derivative uh, then after that options put a number of probably hundreds and thousands of instrument financial products structured products that exist today this entire capital market and they facilitate the current form of finance and the nature of this finance hasn't really changed much in this past 10000 years and note that 10000 years is a very very long time uh so in this past 10 in this past 10000 years the concept of bank the concepts of money has stayed in which are providing people this uh, finance that they can operate on top of it there have always been intermediaries there have always been banks governments when you are trying to say do international transaction international remittance your money is going to be recognized by your government and that's going to be issued by the particular set of banks the very handful and very um what can you say um, the the very niche people who has who can actually get access of it you cannot think of uh, per se an entrepreneur let's say an entrepreneur out of uh, you know just uh, uh, just uh, finishing out of uh, their college can think of launching a bank they can think of launching a startup they can think of launching e-commerce they can think of launching a music company they can they can the hell they can think of building a rocket company right and become world's richest man but still it's not that easy that you become a bank at that early part of it that an early part because it has been limited to a very few capacity this is how always the finance has flown the finance has always play, favored the riches when you have more money you can make even more money that's how finance work that's how the finance has been working for over 10000 years now defi come in and challenges this defi says that we do not need banks we do not need all these intermediaries when i give you my money to say uh, transfer it to my family who is in uh, uh, who is in uh, london i have to go through this hoop of intermediaries you tell me that you do so many things that's why there is so much of fees and, uh, and 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 that's how and, and uh, there is such a long process involved in your money transfer and that's why this international remittance is taking 3 days 4 days in some case 7 days to 10 days now i will say that we are lucky in a way of uh, the digital ecosystem the digital payment ecosystem of india is much ahead of uh, even a advanced nation so the form of uh, digital payment that has came after uh, 2018 in india even before that the innovation in the fintech that has been going on and the digital payments like paytms and many of these ex- upi has existed low, long way back the infrastructure has been enabled that now and now we are at a place where even a vegetable vendor selling on the street side accepts the digital payment this doesn't happen in britain this doesn't happen in us this doesn't happen at this level in any other country which happens here in india so definitely this was a good thing this was a good part that has happened but still international payment is still a pain for people to do in other nations even doing a transfer a bank transfer between uh, two residents say you are sending money from us to us there it, there would be not as convenient services as upi and you will have to do net banking which uh, like the old way manner of it so and and again this banks is kind of a restricted element this financial services has been accessible only to the uh, again i will say that again it favors the rich that's how it has always worked that how that's how it has been built that's how it has been designed now as i was saying the defi comes and challenges that defi says that to all the protocols everything which you do i am going to reinvent from scratch the foundation of this reinvention has started way back in 2008 but just cryptocurrency is just bitcoin 
was not sufficient to bring this revolution. Bitcoin came. It was for the first time in 10,000 years, a form of payment come in, which is not issued by any intermediary like government, like bank. This happened for the first time that there is a currency where each one of us has equal right, has equal access to it. You want to mine like a bank, like an RBI. Why? Why is it that just RBI or the government can at their will print as much as money, right? Inflate the, all, the money which you already have in your bank accounts without your permission. They can just inflate it and then they can spend it. While you don't have that, right? You cannot just make money out of thin air. If money is so easy that it can be made out of thin air, then either it should be accessible to all or should be accessible to none. And that's what Bitcoin came in. Definitely the way the economics, the finance has involved, the evolved. Inflation is a key term. Inflation is something for a new currency, a new asset class that's required. So basically, inflation, uh, so basically that's how why inflation is important. And that's why inflation was also introduced in Bitcoin. And it was important because not everyone, not entire 5 billion population, which was the world population at that time, is going to go into Bitcoin immediately, right? If people will go in 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. People are still getting in, it's still, it's still early. A very handful of people own cryptos. So if this access of minting, now if you see for the Bitcoin, now Bitcoin mining way back in, way back then can be done by anyone and anyone could have made money. Even today, minting can be done by anybody, but the problems are, rewards are so less now. In the early time, inflation of Bitcoin was much higher. Now the inflation of Bitcoin is too, too low. And in five to eight, in eight to 12, in eight to 10 years of time, this inflation will always almost be nil. There will not be an inflation. So what's the vision is that by that time, Bitcoin should be well adopted with the, at least to all the early innovators and the early majority of the people so that this finance system can kick off. And that's what we have seen that Bitcoin is definitely going at very hard and going very fast in this adoption. So just like Bitcoin came for the first time and created this asset class, this money, which started getting compared to the government's money, while there is no government, there is no backing that is supporting it. Still, everyone started uh, treating it equivalent to the money. And, uh, and uh, this money, which has been in circulation, which has been used, we saw limitless and thousands of innovation that has happened over it. Bitcoin created a, 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 a fundamental technology of blockchain, which found its use cases, the trust use cases, not just in cryptocurrency, but went out ahead in enterprises, went out ahead in multiple areas to solve these problems. And now the same blockchain, the same trustless network, the same technology is being used so that in the similar way, in the general finance, in the traditional finance, how we see that uh, first the money was introduced. Uh, so it is your INR, it is your USD. Everyone has their INR and USD. But just being money was not that good enough. I mean, I can send the money to you. You can send it back to me. Okay, it's good enough. But can I do something more? I have a lot of money lying in my bank account. What can I do with that money? And that's where a lot of financial products start coming in, right? Now, it's, this was just one of the use cases so that I, I given the example of investment, that I have a lot of money lying, lying back. Why should I just keep it if this money can work for me? So this was a use case of investing. Then similarly, uh, the concept of lending and borrowing came in that I don't have any money, but uh, I still have uh, my home. I still have my, uh, I still do my business. I still do farming. I still have the capacity to earn this much of amount of money uh, every month or every year. Financial products came in that, all right, you have the capacity. Why don't you take a loan? So 
financial services that start popping in and these kinds of things and and today we know we, we live in the world of fintech uh, and we say that everywhere we can see the financial products for us lying around so just like how current traditional finance is based on the concept of this money this government money that has been issued that has been issued since last 10000 years that's where this entire finance has spawned has grown up what defi is in case of defi the money is your bitcoin the money is your ethereum the other cryptocurrency that are considered money in this digital world so and defi is the product that has been built on top of it all of these are there whatever you name it that can be built uh, you talk about lending and borrowing currently that's happening a lot it, there is at least 80 billion dollar of money that has been currently being lent out and borrowed in defi second we have exchanges exchanges again a very big business a very very big business in capital market for exchanges for example bombay stock exchange uh, new york stock exchange london stock exchange all these stock exchanges are where that where the buy and sell of these shares happen and this is one of the most largest capital market share that takes in the finance so similar to, similar to all these banks who provide lending and borrowing all these exchanges which facilitate trading all these insurance companies which provide insurance defi make sure that uh, now there is going to be a smart contract now there is going to be a computer program which works on a blockchain which is trusted which is transparent which is equally accessible by everyone there is no one uh, bigger or smaller in this ecosystem everyone has equal access everyone can do equal innovation in the space everyone can have access to the same tools to build this trustless uh, to build this trustless technology to come in use so this is what your defi is your defi is the kinds of applications that are being built on top of crypto assets to create an entire alternative finance around it now you and and if you see how the crypto assets or this defi is making its way bridging it to the traditional finance as well while that's not the vision however we understand that to use traditional finance currently there is going to be a bridge there has to be a bridge that people who are using this traditional finance for over 10000 years will take some time to move from one system to another system it cannot happen overnight and that's where slow adoption early innovators who are building these products who are ensuring that the problem that there are a lot of problems there are a lot of challenges there are a lot of use cases that's being built on and uh, it needs to be solved on it needs to be it needs to be worked around it needs to be built it needs to be innovated by someone so that's what well, so this has been an introduction to the basics of defi what you understand about money how defi originated how the finance originated and what is the uh, what is the entire layer that is being built now to give you more clarity i will uh, show you a few slides so that uh, you can make better uh, uh, elements of what are the benefits what are the use cases and what can be done even before that what we will start with is uh, what we what we will start with uh, is a comparison then all right so i hope uh, everyone can see my screen so let me know uh, if you guys are not able to see the screen so on the screen you are seeing how are decentralized and traditional finance is different so a comparison to understand the same properties which traditional finance happens and in the decentralized finance happens so number one first let's let's look at the infrastructure level 
So at an infrastructure level, decentralized technologies or decentralized finance does not require employees or institutions. Everything is programmed, things are online, things are trusted in blockchain, validated by everyone, and then laid upon. So this entire infrastructure, currently this infrastructure uh, in the traditional finance we see, which depends upon institutions and employees. And definitely, these are institutions and employees that can be controlled, that can be manipulated. So all the problems that came in comes along with it. So that's the first level of the D, infrastructure level of access, that we can see how the infrastructure level of this access is different, different for the system. Second was the transparency. The traditional finance does not offer you any transparency. You keep your money in your bank account, but you really, really do not know what's happening with your money where is your money exactly what it is doing many times you feel all right that's okay we trust our government we trust our banks oh they would not be doing anything wrong around it and that's when 1970 financial 1970 great depression happened that's when 2008 financial crisis happened so almost every 40 to 50 years a major financial break happens because of these shortcomings. DeFi apps, that is the applications. So in traditional finance, you do not see any globalized application. There are application specific for everything. If you want to transfer money in India here, you use UPI, you use IMPS, you want to transfer money offshore, you use the SWIFT protocol, which where we will do more work, or we will create more jobs for people, we will spend more, and we will charge you more fees. And that's how it has been, the fragmented. And the entire fragmented, keeping the finance fragmented, the benefit is that the current intermediaries, the current banks, they like it. Because they are able to do more things. If they are able to do more things, then they, are, they will be able to charge more money, ultimately, for that. So that's how we see that there are not much of the globalized application. There is always a street level application or different specific applications that can come and build. While in the DeFi app, we see that there are decentralized applications for finance open and accessible to everyone globally without any restriction. So this restriction is actually a point that the, in decentralized, there is no access restriction. While traditional comes with an access restriction. What is this access restriction? Just know that when your money is in your ba in, 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 in bank, the money is in not with you. The money is with your bank who is taking the custody of your money. Now, it can happen that uh, you go to the bank and uh, they, will, they can deny you the restriction. They will not have liquidity. They might have gotten some problem. The very uh, recent example, some of you must have heard, is uh, of the case of Yes Bank. So there is nothing very wrong that happened, but the access to the money was restricted for a long time. People couldn't withdraw, I think, more than 50,000 from their bank accounts. So you can see that this access, this restriction can be applied at the will, at the, the controls. Now, in these, Decentralized, there is no such access of restriction. Your money is your money. It cannot be your, if your Bitcoin is with you, it cannot even, even, uh, uh, not even the most powerful people in the world combined can actually do anything about it to access restriction of your Bitcoin or your other crypto assets. For your banks, probably it could be just easy as uh, by many of these people to do something around it in order to get you temporarily. I'm not saying that you will get permanent, uh, although it can happen, it can happen as well. But uh, say temporarily, it can. it is very easy for say uh, the police, the lawyers and, these, and the government to uh, restrict the access. Then there are algorithm types. So traditional finance doesn't believe on any such thing as an open source. There is always things as an enterprise grade, enterprise level. And uh, you don't really know what's happening behind the scene. However, in decentralized, you know each and every step. You know exactly what's happening with your money. While 
the beauty is that the money always stays with you and still the decentralized work happens every day so in the decentralized bank the money will be still be in your access will still be in your control while you are say earning a particular interest rate on your money you don't have to give your money to the banks in order to uh, in 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 order to generate this uh, uh, annual interest rate for you traditional finance can uh, uh, the decentralized finance can just do that without you giving you away the custody of the money so these are the core fundamental uh, differences how decentralized and traditional finance has been designed and built now let's look at the benefits uh, of decentralized finance so the decentralized finance by design cannot be tempered so the decentralized finance offer applications that are immutable once data gets verified and added no one can change that information can alter this and it offers full customization to the smart contract so that you can build these ability to recognize any kind of uh, difference changes threshold limitations increase or decrease of asset value and everything in a very customized manner now why would you say that uh, the can't be tempered is a good thing you see most of the scams that happen somewhere a tempering is involved because we have seen multiple times across the year that the financial system which they say a lot of money is being spent a lot of money gets collected a lot of your tax paying money goes towards supporting that bank is spending money hundreds of millions of dollars every year for the auditing purposes and still this broken and old old system of auditing right that someone has done some transaction they will tell that that okay this is why i did that and aud an auditor will decide that okay whether you are saying the right thing or not and in many cases in many of these big scams cases the auditors have been a total fail what is the point of spending so much money when these scams this tempering is still happening where people are taking loans and then they are they are tempering with the data to clear the record that there hasn't been any loan at all on this particular property so that's where the blockchain come in by design it has been made in a way that it will be immutable whether it's the president of united states or prime minister of india or the governor of rbi they cannot do anything about it it is permanently immutable then second is the interoperable design unlike the our banks unlike how our banks are designed to not talk with each other to talk in silos right to talk in steps that doesn't need to happen in the defi space the entire defi space is built on a very interoperable design protocol structure and most of these uses ethereum the standard and protocol so your applications your different lending your capital market your investment apps all of these can talk to each of these applications in order to build a better product more services then there is a fully transparent network most of uh, almost every defi app uh, in a way uses a public blockchain network which is a fully transparent every transaction that happens is recorded instantaneously and uh, uh, and is transparent everyone to validate it then every user takes part in verification you don't have to trust an auditor now why you trust an auditor if you if you can your system your laptop your mobile can take part in the verification why 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 should you trust other people pay them money and then to know that they they have also been paid by other guys to do bad things right so it's the power is given to the users directly and then after that the even the open source even the source code is a public property and developers are free to use it so the level of transparency is much higher after that permissionless access all decentralized financial technologies have permissionless access that is you don't require to uh, say get permission that whether i can access this or not whether i can access in and 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 it's not just about accessing the network from a consumer perspective 
no you will have to broader your thinking here now it's not just about when i am saying permissionless access it just mean that you always have permission to access your bitcoin or access your fund no that's not what i mean what i mean is access to everything that is possible if anyone else can do that in defi space you can do it in defi space that's how it has been built the power is beyond the capacity of what current finance is people are making crazy money by putting uh, by directly helping these smart contracts in running these exchanges in running these uh, banks which provide uh, borrowing and uh, lending essentially let's take an example what happens so a bank you give your money to your bank account currently the typical savings interest savings interest rate is uh, 3 to 4% uh, probably if you do a fixed deposit let's say if you do a fixed deposit you get hardly 6% 6 6 6% at best while if you go to the same bank and you will ask for a loan even for say as good thing as say for an education loan you will end up paying at least 12% 13% 14% of interest so basically here the difference in what these people are being paid who are whose money is really it is and the one it is the one the borrower is paying there is a very high disparity the majority of the fund the majority of the money has actually gone in the fee if we if we realize it defi changes that now if people are taking money at 14% rate the side this side of the people if this side of the people are taking average loan at 14% then this side of the people will also get their investment return at the rate of 14% so by in all these applications all these applications get run by technology all these applications run on a smart contract but the money the liquidity for banks to be able to lend money there has to be people there has to be investors like us like you who are keeping small money who are keeping large money into your bank account so that they can borrow it somewhere now you get to participate in this system directly you do not get to participate in via a bank who is actually taking the maximum money out of it you are participating directly in running that bank by providing your money by providing liquidity in the pool and enabling these services enabling these uh, access to these services for everyone so when we say permissionless access it doesn't mean that you think only from the consumer perspective because that's what you have always done with the traditional finance but with the decentralized finance you will become the direct bank you will be the one who will be operating the exchange you will be the one who will be collecting the fees so all these access are permissionless then user empowerment these applications don't empower any organization so and it's more geared towards users and users have the utmost control on the system everyone has equal and equivalent access and control of this particular system one use their own crypto wallets to maintain their own account themselves they so that the funds cannot be taken away now i will uh, highlight one thing uh, a, lo- a lot of you who might be very much involved with bitcoin who might be doing some trading who um who are keeping some bitcoins or purchase some bitcoins most probably you would be keeping this money in uh, some exchanges or some wallets which we like to call it as a custodian wallet these custodian wallets were not the vision of bitcoin these were not the vision of satoshi nakamoto when they created blockchain when they created bitcoin it was meant to be but however it's not people's fault as well that people are using custodian wallets because it's a new technology the ability to use a non custodial wallet a wallet where you are entirely controlling your own funds 
for that you need a bit of bit you have to be a bit more tech savvy you have to be more understanding and why it, it, it is not because that it has to remain this way always this is only because it is new every year the access to these services increase there was a time when only one people the satoshi nakamoto alone was doing the mining after that five people other cryptographers from stanford harford they joined in then it uh, then it again spread it across and it's still spreading in that sense so if you see more and more as innovation is happening the technology barrier this barrier there is between the people who are not able to uh, still use this technology still not able to understand this is still not able to access it because of the barrier in their knowledge because of the barrier of uh, used technology curve that has to be understood uh, even some of the it becomes it also becomes the defi space also becomes difficult because the, because of uh, uh, these financial lingos that you would ne have never heard so that's why because of these bad user experiences to get more people into crypto uh, these exchanges such as coin dcx wazirx they all use custodial wallet option which essentially mean working just like a bank when you deposit your money to a exchange and uh, and you buy bitcoin and you keep your bitcoin in that exchange do not take it as because you own bitcoin it's in your control no it is not that bitcoin is actually still with coin dcx but that's fine if you are very new in this space you want to get exposure you want to learn if you will get involved you will learn how to do that probably those who already have coin dcx or wazirx or any of the exchanges and they have kept bitcoin already over there i will tell them that there is wallets like trust wallet like jengo wallet like argent wallet that you can use to move your money from coin dcx or from bit or from any other exchanges in your own custody using this wallet definitely those who don't who haven't even tried purchasing or using coin dcx or any of these centralized exchanges will not be able to understand what i am suggesting but those who have can now take their knowledge up that they can install and they can download and install trust wallet trust like wallet any non custodial wallet in which they can take the control of their funds currently coin dcx or any of these exchanges are still um, any of these centralized exchanges are still uh, uh, are still a uh, custodial solutions uh, are still working like a bank who are who and, and they are private company say government can restrict them that no you will not allow your users to withdraw their bitcoin and your access will be gone because you are not using non custodial services because you are using custodial services but as i said it's fine you don't have to be so distrustful about it it's better if you have the access if you have the knowledge it's definitely better to keep your money in your custody however if you are new you think you can make a technical mistake and technical mistake will cost you technical mistake may lose you the your entire money so there there is a risk on that side as well so that's why if you do not feel comfortable enough it's all right to keep your money for now uh, in a custodial services but the way technology innovation is happening now, now we know that just like how uh, there are the centralized exchanges like binance like coin dcx now there are decentralized exchanges that are coming in now in order to trade bitcoin now in order to trade other cryptocurrencies you don't have to give your money to a custodian like binance like coin dcx like any other centralized exchange you can directly participate in the exchange by keeping your money with you with yourself so overall that's the level of user empowerment that can happen once people will be educated enough once people will be aware enough and it it may take it may take one entire generational shift it may happen just in 10 to 20 years it may just happen at the next crash and who knows when the next crash can happen we 
have no clue at all what's going behind these financial systems that can come fallen down like a house of cards any day. We don't have any transparency. So that's what this concept of DeFi is about overall for user empowerment and these uh, access uh, of uh, these uh, permissions and access of these top quality uh, use cases that we are going to look at. So the top DeFi use cases are uh, currently asset management. Now, it is going to be very funny in some way because those of you who might have, say, uh, attended a presentation on five years back, four years back on Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, I'm sure you all must be very young, young then. Uh, so I do not expect that really that many of you would have uh, seen a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or any of these presentation five years back. But if you would have looked at those presentations, this slide wouldn't have been very different. Only the difference was that this was the potential. Five years back, we used to talk it as a potential that the blockchain has the potential to revolutionize asset management. It has, uh, there are decentralized organizations that can be built. A lot of these use cases uh, uh, are very similar. DeFi is the major, the DeFi is the umbrella technology. Now that is, that has really made it possible. So the difference that has happened in the presentation I would have given you five years back and in today's presentation is that in earlier, these all were speculation these all were something which we were expecting that this will be built and developed but we really do not have much clue how it will happen however people have been innovating like crazy people have been innovating on this uh, uh, on a multitude of functions and that's how DeFi came up how, that's how a finally a solution was created that no we are doing everything wrong we create at the name of crypto we create exchanges these exchanges are centralized exchanges which uh, keep custody of your money. This is very much against the fundamentals of uh, the Web3. This is very much against the fundamentals of cryptocurrency that you are losing your custody. So while a lot of innovation is happening and definitely everyone, including me, I am also very thankful to those innovation because if those innovations were not there, not many people would have been able to access it. Not many people would have been able to use it today. So it is important. However, DeFi saw this from an another angle. They say that if we have to do it right, we have to start ground up and we need to use the same underpinning technology that is making these Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies so transparent, so uh, powerful. And that's how the DeFi was born. And these entire suite of applications uh, start spawning upon and currently every use case you are seeing today that exists, that's live, that's running and there are real people, definitely all of those real, all of the people currently those who are using are uh, either uh, uh, innovators or uh, early adopters. It has not went still into uh, early adoption stage of mainstream. But uh, the innovators had adopted it way, way, way back and now the early majority has started coming in. As soon as the early, uh, as soon as the early people will come in and we will move to the phase that early majority will start coming in and that's where the majority of the people are. That's where the majority of the people lie in. And once that becomes accessible, once that layer becomes accessible, the DeFi will explode. Because once you understand it, you really see that it's a no-brainer that we have to remove our traditional finance from our system in order to create a better world. There is no other way. and But definitely, there is no other shortcut as well. It's been 10,000 years. These center, uh, this traditional finance has taken to grow how we see currently. We do not see that in two years, in, ten, in probably in five years, or in 10 years, it will be replaced. It may take an entire generation shift, but now the pathway is very much clear and the pathway is uh, very much uh, in use already. So my last point would be that all of you, 
some of you might have been thinking about on the entrepreneurship side some of you might be thinking of doing that after your college some of you might be taking into job for the applications regardless of how you are thinking of your career to take it if you are interested in finance know that defi is the next big thing that's going to happen not probably i'm not saying that it's going to underpin and root out traditional finance in next 5 10 15 years but if you see the world from the lens of an innovator you do not see it from the globe level of what can happen one year down the line if you if you can dream at the capacity of what can happen 10 year down the line then defi is what you would want to get in thank you so much and if there is any question i would like to take it and uh, uh, help you guys understand this technology even better thank you so lokesh and the team all to you uh, please let me know if there are any questions from uh, the audiences we will be happy to take one uh yes so guys uh, any queries please raise your hands uh, so we will uh, you know let you um unmute yourself in that order so there won't be any confusion in the middle so raise your hands if you have any queries or if you want to ask our speaker anything Okay, I guess nothing from the audience. Okay, all right then. So I hope you guys had a good understanding. I know it can some it can something be overwhelming. Trust me. Uh, as I said, a very handful of people are working on it. Uh, it's difficult. It's currently in very young stage. But now you guys have been exposed. Now definitely. most of you might still be scratching the head that what's happening what's not happening but use this as a route use this as a route to learn more on on the on the on the concept and uh, you might be able to see the potential of it so with that uh, thank you everyone thank you so much for having me and listening out uh, i hope you guys uh, will be able to look more into it but before that i understand that you guys are going to have your exams as well coming up in next week so i really want to uh wish all of you the best of luck as well for your exams uh we should know that probably exams are the seasons i would say people learn the most or what you guys probably wouldn't have learned in this entire four months of semester you guys are going to be learning in the next four days so definitely keep up the good work do not give up and uh, regardless of how your exams go you know that you will get the knowledge that what you learn from these courses in this next four days so work hard and all the best for your exams thank you so much everyone good evening everyone i am vinay goel feel highly privileged to present the vote of thanks it has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event on reimagining finance an introduction to defi i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest speaker mr akash gaurav co-founder of outlink and the technology entrepreneur for taking out time from his busy schedule we enjoyed every minute of your session as well as your marvelous sense and dedication for encouraging young minds it was such a privilege to have you with us thank you sir a wide round Thanks of so applause much, and sincere regards to all the audience who made the event a memorable one by making the time to be with us today and taking the event to a great to a grand success i request you all to follow our social media handles on instagram linkedin to get yourself updated with all the tech stuff and enriching events and sessions done by us and don't miss the future thrills thank you
Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.